Welcome to the Battle of the Pop-Tarts. Today I made homemade Pop-Tarts and we're gonna compare them to traditional Pop-Tarts and to these organic toaster pastries. Mr. Baking with Chickens threw down the ultimate gauntlet and challenged me to a blind taste test. Too sweet, too much going on, but flavor good. We're gonna taste test them side by side. Stick around, we'll show you the results as we compare and contrast all of these different Pop-Tarts. Supreme, buck buck bake. Chickens. I'm Christina. This is the show about baking using eggs from my backyard chickens. Technically it's only chicken because only one chicken is laying eggs right now. The other three have decided that they don't feel like laying eggs. You try squeezing an egg out of your butt. Hello? Later on I'm going to compare the Trader Joe's toaster pastries to the original Pop-Tarts compared to my pie crust version to Mr. Baking with Chicken's shortbread. We're gonna break them all open to see which one reigns supreme. <laughs> I'm gonna make the Smitten Kitchen Pop-Tart recipe, and then I have a recipe from Mr. Baking with Chickens that looks like this. This is what I have to work with. What the fuck? What? We'll see if Mr. Baking with Chickens nailed it. No, you sabotaged me. Shut your Pop-Tart hole. <laughs> Grab the recipe for these Pop-Tarts down in the description. Let's bake. On the left side of the screen, you're gonna see the Smitten Kitchen version of the recipe. On the right side is the Mr. Baking with Chickens sugar cookie style. Normally, I am not about Crisco. Crisco has a higher melting point than butter, and it's also 100% fat, unlike butter, which also has water and other things in it. It's going to give you a softer, sandier, fluffier dough than you normally would and couldn't get with butter. You see I'm using just a little bit of sugar here on the Smitten Kitchen recipe and way too much sugar on the Mr. Baking with Chickens version of the recipe. Because if you know me and you know my motto is more salt, less sugar. And the Mr. Baking with Chickens version of the recipe has baking powder and baking soda. Take your butter, take your Crisco, and we're going to cut that into the dry ingredients with a pastry cutter. And what you're looking for is kind of soft sand-like pebbles. So it's gonna be kind of mushing together but still falling apart. Keep it nice and cold. If your hands are too hot, it's gonna melt and you're gonna have a horrible time. Add your milk, and then for the cookies, vanilla extract. Add your eggs, whisk them all together, whip it, whip it good. I say whip it. Whip it good. I say whip it. Whip it good. And then you're gonna pour your liquid ingredients into the dry, and then you're going to mix it and stir it with a fork until you see a dough start to come together. Get your hands in there, start kneading it, mushing it all together until you get a nice dough that is not sticky to the touch. If it is, just sprinkle a little bit of flour until you get the right consistency. So roll it out between two pieces of parchment paper and then cut it out and measure it to approximately three inches by four inch rectangles. If you wanna make minis, you can make smaller ones. Once you've got your pie dough cut out, put your pieces onto some baking sheets and then you're going to paint them with an egg wash and this is really cool it's gonna actually act like the glue to hold those dough pieces together so that you don't lose any of the jam while it's baking and then fill it with your favorite jam any kind of jam works and make sure you leave a little bit of edge around the sides so that you can put the other second piece on top seal it with your fingers and then use the tines of your fork to press down on the sides and further seal those edges so that none of that yummy gooey jam comes squishing out of the sides so you're gonna want to poke some holes along the top so you get nice flat Pop-Tarts instead of like a domed pillow Pop-Tart. If you wanna make an icing glaze for your Pop-Tarts, all you have to do is mix one tablespoon of milk with three quarter cups of powdered sugar with whatever flavor and food coloring that you want. Booyah, Pop-Tarts. Pop-Tarts actually started in 1963. Post, which was a competitor to Kellogg's, announced that they were going to revolutionize the breakfast industry by making these things called country squares. And Kellogg heard about it, and in six months got the product to market before Post and then took over the market share and Post's country squares, which they then called Toasty Popums or something like that, never really took on like Pop-Tarts did. 
Early bird gets the worm. Did somebody say worm? Don't forget to like and subscribe and drop your comments below. So here's the Trader Joe's toaster pastry. Here is the Kellogg's Pop-Tart. Here is my Pop-Tart recipe using Smitten Kitchen's pie crust style. And this is Mr. Baking with Chicken's shortbread cookie crust that I made too thick and I would recommend making thinner if you were to do this again. See how thin these are? These should be closer to that. I got lazy. No, you sabotaged me. Uh, sure. You used the crappy jam. It's made not crappy. Too made them too big. This is jam from your sister's tree. This is the best shit you'll ever have. Okay, it's good, but- Try your Pop-Tart hole. <laughs> so, taste test. Well, the question is, to toast or not to toast? Some people actually put them in the freezer and eat them from frozen. I think that's weird. I find eating them out of the container just not toasted a little bit weird, but I know that's how Mr. Baking with Chickens eats them because whenever I buy a box of my hot cocoa ones, they disappear because he just takes them and eats them. Hmm. It's really good. I definitely get a lot of the fruity jam flavor. It's like a saltine cracker situation. It doesn't really have a flavor, but I think that's the point. Like Kellogg's purposely makes it more bland so you're getting the fruit taste. I mean, it's a sugar rush, but like, mm, I need some water. It tastes healthy. This one has more subtle jam flavor, like it's more cookie than jam. I take back everything I said earlier. The Pop-Tart is actually way tastier than the Trader Joe's. Logically, I would choose this one because this is better ingredients and it's wholesome and it's like better for me, but like junk food crack on my taste buds. In a blind taste test, I would choose this one. Ooh, that's a lot of sugar. Palate cleanse. It's definitely thicker and it could use more jam flavor, but I like it because it's really balanced. Like it's not too sweet. I purposely put extra pinches of salt in the dough so that it would help balance that salty sweetness. More jam, thinner crust would be way better, but flavor wise, I like how this tastes. The dough tastes really, really, really good. Pat cleanse. Mr. Bacon Chickens, are you ready? Wait, we need to do like a really nice grand. So this is the Mr. Baking with Chicken sugar cookie style recipe. So he, we literally took a sugar cookie, adjusted it a little bit and turned it into this. And the jam filling inside is a sour cherry jam. It's really sweet because of the sour cherries. Maybe not the best choice, but like gourmet wise, super delicious. It's pretty close. The whole thing has way too much sugar because there's, I think, a half a cup of sugar. I'm not into this, Mr. Baking with Chickens. What do you have to say for yourself? I hate to do this, but oh, I'm no. gonna prove you wrong. He's breaking out the tripod, you guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr. Baking with Chickens has thrown the gauntlet and he is declaring a blind taste test. <laughs> I'm gonna hand it to you and you're gonna identify which one you think it is. Trader Joe's. Smitten Kitchen. My pie crust version. Pop Tart. Sugar cookie. Or this one's Pop Tart and the other one was sugar cookie. Mm. Nope, I stand by my decision. This is the sugar cookie. Next one. Next one. Mm. This tastes like your sugar cookies. Now, I'm gonna hand you the Kellogg's Pop-Tart, and then you're gonna identify which one out of these next three taste most similar to it. Not this one. Too soft, too sweet, too much going on. Texture-wise, too soft, but flavor good. Okay, next one. This one's definitely the Trader Joe's one. Okay, next one. I taste like your sugar cookie again. You know, did I get it right? So this is the original Pop-Tart. Hmm, no. Hmm. No, I didn't like that. That's it. Oh. <laughs> Champion! I won. I win. So what did you learn out of this entire experience? Never to challenge your baking. <laughs> Say that again. Say it again. To never challenge your baking. When I was doing this, I also didn't have pie crust skills like you have. So if you want to learn my mad pie crust baking skills, like Mr. Bacon with Chickens just so astutely called out, check out my perfect pie crust tips on my blog. And there's also an episode and I teach you how to make the perfect 
pie crust. I do an all butter pie crust, super easy. Check it out. Here, grab it. The name Pop-Tart and like this frosting style was actually inspired by the artist Andy Warhol. So in the 1960s, pop art and pop culture were becoming a huge thing. So that's why they called them Pop-Tarts. And this icing is very similar to that artistic style that made Andy Warhol very popular. That's it for this Battle of the Pop-Tarts episode. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you for sticking all the way to the end. So I hope this is informative. Get my Pop-Tart recipe and Mr. Baking with Chicken's Pop-Tart recipe augmented slightly by me to make it better. Hey, what are you doing? I can hear you. <laughs> Down in the description below. Thank you for watching. Love you all. Bok bok bake. Go forth, make and eat Pop-Tarts. And we'll see you next time for the next episode of Baking with Chickens.